everybody, I want to spend some time today going over a phrase you've probably heard dozens of times before and talking about variables in DAX. And the phrase is, variables are constants. And it sounds simple on the face of it, but there's actually a fair amount of nuance and complexity that's bundled up in those three words. And so I want to spend some time today unpacking what that, what that really means and how it affects your measures that use variables. And so just as a brief review, that a variable within DAX can really be any valid DAX expression. It can be a value, it can be a calculation, it can be a measure, you can declare a variable that represents a table, another variable, or some combination of those things. Um, and there are two parts to a variable. There's the, the VAR declaration, where you, you initialize the variable, you give it a name, and then a value. And then there's the return statement, which then calls at least one of the variables that you declare. And it's not like parentheses where you need to have one return statement for each variable, but you need to have at least one return statement if you've declared any variables. And the key here is that, as I said before, the phrase is variables are constant. And what that means is once variables have been assigned a value, that value cannot change prior to the return statement. And let's let's take a look at what that really means. But that's that's a phrase to keep in mind. The value cannot change prior to the return statement. And so let's take a look at a simple example here where I've just got countries and total sales. And that total sales measure is just our, our most basic measure that's just sum of line sales within the sales table. And let's say that what we want to do is we want to get total sales for the year 2020. And in this particular data set, we've got sales for 2019, or 2000, yeah, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And so to get the sales for 2020, we just have to apply a very simple filter condition, which is we have calculate, so we change our filter context. We have our total sales measure, and then our year is 2020. And if we drop that measure into the table, we get exactly what we expect, which just trust me that 59.9 million is the right number for, for 2020. So, so far, so good. Now let's think about if we want to apply variables to this. So here's a slightly revised version of the previous measure. And what we've done here is created a variable called toad sales and just set that equal to our total sales measure. And so if we think about it from the standpoint of algebraic substitution, if we just substitute what was previously our total sales measure here for tote sales, which is equal to that total sales measure, you would think that it might be the same thing and produce the same result. But if we take a look and we drop that, drop that measure into our table, what we'll see is that it does not produce the same result. And let's close this out and take a look. And what we see instead is that it produces the same result as our total sales. And this gets back to the concept of variables being constants. And so if we take a look back at the, the revised measure, we can really unpack what's happening here, which is the variable total sales is declared. And that gets the value of total sales. So for a given row, let's say we're, we're in the Moldova row, and that variable gets the value of 2.35 million. Now, if you remember, that value can't change until after the return statement is called. So when we go down here to calculate our measure in the, the result variable, what we've got is tote sales, which is a constant at 2.35 million and then we apply our filter context to it date year equals 2020 but it doesn't matter because that constant can't change so we could say date year equals 2019 date year equals 2020 date year equals 2021 and it's still going to be the same 2.35 million because that tote sales is now locked in as a constant until the return and when it returns 
Then we go to the next row and the variable picks up the value of Netherlands 4.4 million and the process repeats itself, locking that in as a constant until the return statement. So what you get is you get exactly what you got in the, in the total sales measure, not in the, the measure that filters down to 2020. And so you might be asking yourself, well, that doesn't, that doesn't actually seem very useful. And in this context, it's not. That, and this is a common mistake that when people are start using variables initially make is they put the variable in the first expression portion of the calculate statement. And that is typically not going to give the result they're looking for because it locks that in as a constant value. And so if you've got that, that variable in the first part, it's not that useful. And there really aren't that many use cases I can think of where that's something you'd expressly intend and want to do. But on the flip side, that variables really shine when you put them within iterators. And we're going to talk through this case in particular, which is a previous value um, case. We're looking for a date and then a previous value subject to a number of conditions. But the point I want to raise here is that the way you used to have to do this before variables came to DAX was through a function called earlier. And if we look in the, the SQL BI DAX guide, what they say now is that variables actually work so well in this context that they recommend not ever using that earlier function anymore. And instead using the technique I'm going to show in a minute, which is to use variables to mark that current row. So let's take a look at that more complex example where we've got variables in the, the iterator portion rather than in the expression portion. So let's take a look at this actual case. And this is, this is actually a case from a question that came up in the Enterprise DNA user forum. And what the, the question was, was it wanted to look at each date within a range and then come up with the first prior date that was not a weekend or a holiday. And I want to focus particularly on this Tuesday, October 15th as, as the prime example here. So what you want, the, the, the desired result was to look at that date and then Monday was Columbus Day, so it was a holiday. Then the next previous days were Sunday, Saturday. And so the, the date that we wanted to get was October 11th was the Friday. And so if you look here, previous day, no weekend, no holiday for that Tuesday was the 11th. And the same thing was true for that Monday, that Sunday, and that Saturday. So that's, that's what we want to get as the result. And here's the measure that we used for this. And what we did is declared a variable that was selected date, and that was just selected value of the date. So in this case, what it would do it would pick up October 15th in our variable and then hold that as a constant until the return statement. And so then what we do is evaluate the DAX outside in. So we, we look at this filter condition. So it's removing all the, the filters on dates to begin with. And then it's setting a series of additional filters. So it's taking that, that constant selected date, October 15th, and it's saying, give me all the dates prior to that. And then of those dates, make sure that none of those dates are a Saturday, a Sunday, or a holiday. And so then what it does, it takes the max of those, those dates that were filtered. And so you can see here that having selected date as a constant is kind of a stake in the ground upon which all the other dates are evaluated either before or after. And if we take a look and see how well this works. So what we've got is we've got our selected date here of the 15th. And then we're filtering everything that's prior to that. So all the way up to here. And then filtering out holidays and filtering out weekends. And so then what we're doing is we're taking the max of that, of that filtered table. And so what we get is the max on the 15th, when we take out all those other conditions, is that Friday, that Friday the 11th. 
And so you can see then if we go down to, to the return statement, then it starts over with the next day, the 16th. And then we do the same thing. And what we find is the previous, the previous day here is, is now the 15th because it's the maximum day that's not a holiday or a weekend. And it just continues to iterate through the table till it gets to the, the end of the, of the data here. And so you can see in this case, when we put the variable into the iterator portion, rather than the expression portion, it works exactly as we planned. And it really takes advantage of the fact that variables are constants. So I hope that explains that phrase a bit, gives you some insight into perhaps why your measures seem to work sometimes and not other times, and just provide some general understanding of what that that important concept means. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.